Very good, very good. Greetings. Greetings. <laughs> Greetings from the dark side. Greetings from the dark side. Exactly. This is the, the Mr. and Mrs. Sith, ladies and gentlemen, and individuals. Yes, so, Like, we didn't even get to really introduce <laughs> y'all yet because right. we were just getting our toes in and getting comfortable. But since you're here, we might as well, like, dive in because mm-hmm. it's lovely to have y'all. Absolutely. Um, Like, so... Y'all know I've been fangirling over you for a minute, but since Duchess like knows y'all knows y'all and was like in a whole pact and everything like y'all peoples, I figured I'd just pass the mic to her so I could just like fangirl and just bask in your ambiance. <laughs> well, thank you. <laughs> cool. So we just check in. How are y'all doing this evening? We are good. We are good. Yeah. Fantastic. Relaxing, you know, getting ready for various things we do through the week. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's about it, you know. Okay. Nuclear, like, why do you say nuclear? What happened? You said a nuclear week? No, I said various things we do through the week. Oh. oh. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Very- I mean, it's only Wednesday. <laughs> well, you know, we, we, the, the geeks in us have a few things we do mm-hmm. role playing wise through mm-hmm. the week. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, with D&D, stuff like that. Absolutely. D&D is in Dungeons and Dragons, for those yes, who don't indeed. know. Yes, okay. indeed. Okay. okay, so you're kinky and geeky. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, indeed. So I'm I'm far behind on the whole Dungeons and Dragons right, track. So, like, what do y'all do with Dungeons and Dragons? Because I don't really know what it is. I know it's live action role play, but, like, what are you doing? Well, we uh, we we're, we play through Zoom, but it's uh, traditional Dungeons and Dragons. It's you know, it's it's the books and making characters and role playing through different worlds and dungeons and stuff like that. Okay, I mean, can I also just say like I love the fact that you are two black kinky individuals who also are geeky and kinky and embrace that because I think a lot of people think kink and D&D and World of Warcraft is just for like white folks mm-hmm. but it's oh, this, really this, not. Wasn't that the same thing people thought that kink was for white folks? Exactly. Right. Exactly. So you'll be surprised. A lot of kinky people that are geeks and kink. It's I mean. For some reason it goes together. Yeah. It does. <laughs> I mean the role playing. I mean I kind of get it. I kind of get it. Y'all gonna have to teach me one day. I haven't, I haven't been uh, initiated into the D and D world. But <laughs> <laughs> one day. <laughs> was, can, I, can I ask? Were you guys like always? You were. I assume you were always geeks, and then once you became kinky, it kind of melded in, or is that reverse? Like, how does that work? Or how did um, that happen with you? I guess we've always been geeky mm-hmm. in one fashion or another. I've always played. I've always been role playing for since 78 i've been i've been a geek for for forever and uh we got into role playing well i got back into she just got into it roughly a year ago with a bunch of other kinksters who were starting a game up Mm. Hmm. okay so you know she's learning and she's doing good and we're having fun yeah are you a dungeon master (laughs) <laughs> no, I, I've done it in the past, but, you know, this particular game that we're playing, I'm not. Mm-hmm. Okay, because that's, like, the only thing I do know is Dungeon Mastering, and I know that's a lot of work from everybody that yeah, I've talked to. It really is. Yeah, like, it is a dedication. Yeah, it is. It is. And the guy, the, the, the individual who does it, black man, he's doing really good. Okay. Fantastic. That's that. So, it's yeah, a little, I'm, I'm like, sure you know him. He's in the, he's in the community also. Mm. No name dropping? Serious. Serious black man. Serious black man. Serious black man. Oh, oh. Uh, okay. Okay, yeah, I do yeah. know who that is. All the kinky geeky uh-huh. folks stay together. <laughs> it's, a bunch of, it's a bunch of people you probably know also. Hood mm-hmm. Man is in the game with us. Oh, wonderful. I love Hood Man. Yeah. Uh-huh. See, yeah. <laughs> He's such a star. I mean, I mean, people Seriously. you know are into the same thing. Yeah. <laughs> okay, okay. Okay, so hold up, hold up. So, like, low-key, like, uh, uh, I still don't understand what you're doing. So, I'm like, I'm trying to construct, like, are you making worlds? You're, you're role-playing, like, is specific avatars? 
Like, I have, that's basically all I know. Well, what are you doing? Dungeon uh, role playing, uh, pen and paper, tabletop role playing, which is different than, say, video game role playing. Okay. It's, it's more of a collaborative storytelling. Yeah. The DM creates a world or uses a world that's pre-generated. It's, it's already written about and books on it. And we make characters that are inserted into that world. And then he gives us adventures and, um, and things to overcome. And the, the collaborative part is that we are um, role-playing our characters and how our characters interact with the world and, and the uh, adventures he puts against us. Mm-hmm. And we work as a team and to overcome it and you know stuff like that. Get awesome. experience, move up levels, get more and more powerful and more and more more spells, harder and harder right. adventures and shit like that. Okay. Like we've got like two separate games going in the same week. Yeah. So <laughs> mm. it, it gets a little addictive. So wait, are you guys on I the same same team or are you guys on yeah. separate? Yeah. Like, we're teams? always on the same team. We play okay. different characters. You know, one game we're playing a pair of twins. Another game we're playing a, a pair of incestuous twins. Oh, yeah, I love it. I, yeah, I love it. Okay, that's a whole other conversation. So we throw a little kick in there where we right. can get it. <laughs> <laughs> I fucking love that. <laughs> it's, it's fun. Another game we're just playing, you know, a, a pair, of, pair of members of a larger team. Things like what? What was the last thing you said? I said the other game we're just playing. We're just playing. Mm. A, a, Two members of a larger team. I mean, both games is a large, you know, it's a large team. But like I said, like we said, one game we're playing a pair of incestuous twins. The other game we're just playing, you know, people who know each other, stuff like that. And you know, you got different races. It, it's it's fun. It's it's very it's, it's very interesting when you see as people try to inhabit these characters because you know. It's just a var- it's just a variety of things that you're doing, do and you're you, just do like. Do you take on accents? I, and I like... had, for instance, I had to kill him. Like oh. in one of the games, I had to kill him. Oh well. Hmm. And it's the role of the character. Dice, I and guess. then he came back from. Then he came back to life. <laughs> okay. As a new, as a new character. Yeah, oh, cool. Oh, cool. Like I said, you know, you got call. You call the collectors and one of the. Yeah, games. a lot of people are. A lot of kinky, mostly actually. A good ninety-five percent of the people in both games are from the King community, from the oh, black, from the POC King community. Oh, that's awesome! That's awesome. Mm-hmm. Okay, so because I'm I'm me, do things <laughs> ever like bleed off? Like, say for instance, you had to kill him in a game. Did he ever like y'all have to get petty with some stuff when you're done playing the game? Like, does it come into nah, real nah, life? No, nah, nah, no. Nah. Okay. <laughs> that, that that just doesn't even. <laughs> That doesn't even sound like us. <laughs> in the game, my character's petty as fuck. Yeah. Right. But in the game, right. he's okay. 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 His character's it's like, man, in the it's game. like acting, like being an actor. Right. You know? Right. You leave it on the stage kind of thing. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Perfect. So, That's how it should be. I think that. Mm-hmm. Well, I do have a question because you're talking about, you know, you guys are a D&D sadistic married couple who plays D&D. And you happen to share, like, how does that work? Like, what wait, wait. Ha- so, for <laughs> listeners that don't know what D and D is, can you define what that is, uh, Duchess? Uh, a D and D relationship is somebody who identifies as a dominant and a dominant. And normally, when you see relationships, you know, in the scene, you see them as dominant submissive or master and slave or DS or right? a DS exactly. So, seeing a D and D couple, uh, life goals, by the way, right? Hardcore, <laughs> hardcore life goals um, is very rare is very rare um, because there always seems to be some kind of power dynamic or power play that has to happen within relationships. But you're also sadists and you share a submissive and you play D&D and you're geeky. Like, how does that play into the kink? How does that play into just your dynamic in general? Um, <laughs> well, I mean, I, we don't have, we are into a lot of the same things. Mm-hmm. So our compatibility works together. Mm-hmm. Um, we, I don't know, it, 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 it works. Mm-hmm. We're both sadists, so we do need, you know, a masochist or, or bottom somebody mm-hmm. to beat on. Right. Some of the tease, you know, whatever. We, we don't have that. We fuck with each other back and forth. But for the most part, we're, it's almost like uh, Gomez and Matisha. Uh, 
Y'all speaking to my heart yeah. right now. Y'all are speaking to my it's heart right now. It's probably closer to that than it is to anything else. I mm-hmm. love that. Yeah, that's 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 actually um, that's right on brand for y'all. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's very um. So it works. I mean, like I said, we. Uh, I know a lot of people always ask us, "How does that work? How does that work?" I mean, it's a shame we don't have our. Uh, Sub isn't here tonight with us. Mm-hmm. She was here last week. We didn't get the chance to get on. Mm-hmm. I mean, we've talked to her. And she said she's told people that being our sub is easy because we're almost like the same person. Right. You know, it's not like two different people and she's got to go back and forth with mm-hmm. each person. It's like right. we're like one person. Right. She's bouncing. So for her, it's easy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, we're more alike than we are different. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's true. That's very know. true, actually. <laughs> so, so can I ask? Because, like, ideal is what you guys have, right? You're very much alike, very similar interests, geeky, kinky, sadistic. You know, I love all of that. But, like, it's not typically what you see. So mm-hmm. how did you guys find one another? Not so much how does it work, because it sounds like it works really easily. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> but, like, how did you guys either, like, create this thing that you're not seeing or that I am from my experience and not seeing in the scene typically mm-hmm. how did you two create this how did you two like intentionally kind of go against the grain even though you both know who you are yeah it's, it could be well he was in the lifestyle first mm-hmm. um about what a year or two before I got there yeah about a year and we were friends for a few years before he even got to lifestyle. Okay. So it's like, I guess in order to create it, you had, we had to kind of look at the fact that we probably are, we had to acknowledge that we were different from everything else that existed at the time, at least for us to see. Mm-hmm. It wasn't until later on we became more vocal about you know, being comfortable being a D&D couple and at, that was okay whether people thought it was okay or not, it was going to be okay for us, that we learned of more D&D couples that existed mm-hmm. that were just quietly in the background, not quite as vocal, but were comfortable. It had been together for much longer than we were. Mm-hmm. So we knew that they, it existed, but it was, it was definitely not common. Right. You know, and it's it's still not common, but yeah. it was not common when we first got there. So in order to create it, we kind of have to just acknowledge to ourselves that this is what we are and that if we're going to go forward, we're just going to go forward shoulder to shoulder. And like whoever doesn't like it too bad, so sad, you know, <laughs> can't help you with that. Right. Right. And one of the things, one of the major things that helped was knowing what we didn't want. Mm-hmm. You know, we both were previously married, so we know what didn't work. Right. So we knew what not to look for. So we started looking for, you know, other th- you know things that that uh, yes, that worked. I mean, um, I when I was single, I was I won't say I was looking for someone like her. I didn't think that particular person existed. So I was like building a Frankenstein. Right. Mm-hmm. Right. You know, I had you know person for this, a person for that, and da 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 da. And then as me and her became friends, we started hanging out and learning more and more and more about each other. We realized we were more compatible than we had ever met in anyone else. Hmm. Which is beautiful. Facts. Like I said, life goals right here. Yeah. (laughs) Thank you. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's the truth. I mean, I think especially navigating the kink, you see uh, a lot of people seeking these aspects of what they want or what they desire and what you said previously about the fact of knowing what you don't want Mm -hmm. is very important i think a lot of people just settle for whatever you know floats in their door um and And some of that is interesting because some of that has to do with the idea that you know depending on, you know, we all grew up in the same world, right? You know, we all might have different experiences, but the society is just the way that it is. So it sort of dictates to us that you want to be chosen as opposed to you doing the choosing. Yeah, right. Absolutely. So you contort yourself to fit things that maybe Mm. don't really fit you. Mm. Right. It takes your agency away. Mm. But, and then you, and then you, you, 
Say that again? It takes your agency away. Exactly. Exactly. And so yeah. now you're not really consciously choosing for yourself. You're being chosen and having mm-hmm. things chosen for you. Mm-hmm. Because the world or the TV or whatever tells you that this is how you, this is the blueprint for for um, for success in relationships and dynamics and such like. When the reality is that there is no blueprint. Right. Mm-hmm. True. True. But can I can I ask? Because like I feel like it's very much a macro micro situation, right? Like in the yeah. macro, we know in society in the world, this is kind of like what it is. We all have different experiences, like you said, but kind of like we are molded or or kind of shaped or. I don't know, informed from a very young age that this is how we need to be. We have to be moldable. And I feel like you either go go with that or you go against the mold and you break free of that and create kind of like your own existence, you know, your own pathway. And I feel like with kink, it's very much a microcosm of all of that, right? Where like even more so all of that stuff is compounded. You need to do kink this way. You have to be a dominant this way. You can only do this kind of like, you know, so like with all of that, because we know all those layers are there, especially as a black kinky person. Mm -hmm. Now black kinky, I don't want to assume your identities, but can you actually let me, can y'all identify individually? Can you tell us how you both identify as a whole and as kinky individuals? And then I'll come back to my question. Well, <laughs> assuming that you mean pronouns. I'm pronouns <laughs> and everything in general, like kinky, poly, queer, uh, hetero, cis. Like what, how do you identify as a whole, as a human, and as a kinky individual? Oh, well, my pronouns are she and her. Mm-hmm. I identify as heteroflexible, mm-hmm. specifically. I'm non-monogamous. Mm-hmm. Okay. And um, I think that covers it. In the, label, in the titles in the community. Oh, oh the title in the community is um, is dominant and top. But I just use I usually use use the the um, the catch all D type. You know, I just say mm-hmm. I'm a D type. Okay. Okay. And. Oh, oh, and primal. Oh. <laughs> right. I'm supposed, okay. I'm supposed to leave that all the way out. Like, let's not leave that out here. Come yeah, it's now. kind of important. I'm like a primal <laughs> heathen. I'm like a primal hedonist, so I have to include uh, that as well. Woman off okay. my own heart. Okay. <laughs> so hold on. Wait, 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 wait. I want to get back to my question before y'all start defining what primal hedonist and all this is. But hold on. Okay, so you have all these layers, right? You're a heteroflexible black woman that's kinky in the community. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of things that are oftentimes thrown up against you. And there's, I assume, some side eyes you're gonna get Mm -hmm. when you are establishing a D and D relationship, which is not the norm. Mm -hmm. Can I ask, as a black woman, how did you come up up against that and kind of like give it the finger? And then as a couple, and then also as a black man, because I feel like you as individuals are gonna get a different kind of energy from people that are seeing and interacting with you as a couple. Mm-hmm. Yep. Or, and sense? individually. Yeah. You know, we're, we're definitely going to experience different pushback on why we don't fit the norm. So for me, it's the constant, and I mean constant, even to this day, the constant assumption that I am his, mm-hmm. his, um, his S type. Right. Mm-hmm. And, or the alpha sub. Or the <laughs> alpha sub. That's a new one. I got, the, I got the alpha sub like a few years ago, which was literal hilarity by that time. But um, I kind of, I kind of had to look at it like, you know, is it okay to curse on here? Just gotta, yeah, I gotta yeah, ask. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I've done it. I'm like, I'm, right. so I had to subscribe to the idea that what doesn't feed, fuck, or finance me doesn't matter. Right. Hmm. So it's like, you know, what you what you eat don't make me shit. So I'm not really worried about your perspective on whether or not I meet your ideal. I'm going to tell you and correct you. And I'm going to correct you kindly. I'm not I'm not malicious. Right. But um, my attitude is that if I have to correct you, then I just take it off of my head that I had to. Mm-hmm. And I remember that you're the person that kind of sit that that sits within the sphere of oh all women are x right you know? and, right and that's the experience i've had i mean i can't that experience is mainly with men mm-hmm. um which honestly the funny, I thing, the funny thing is though now you make me think on it even more deeply is that i've had a, 
it's either experience of male D types assuming that I am his S type, so they're not going to talk to me anyway. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then male S types who assume that I'm not, that I'm a different kinds of poly. Like I'm, I guess I'm poly the way most people, I guess, expect it to be that I have my separate subs and things like that. So they're looking for some all encompassing private time, some fantasy, you know, of the black goddess and things like that. So those are some of the things I've had to, you know, navigate and come across. And, you know, some of that is based on, you know, like if they have a goddess complex and I'm like, well, I don't know if I really fit that because you may not really enjoy what I'm about to do. On the table, but, you know, whatever, you know, these are not my problems. Right, right. <laughs> so other stuff is like things like that. So like for you. What? Oh, um, let's go back. Uh, I identify as, I guess, hetero, mm -hmm. hetero, I, I'm still, the, the sexual labels I'm really not even keen on. So, I mean, I'm just hetero. I like women. Okay. That's about it. I haven't came across anyone other than uh, a woman that I'm attracted to. So as far as I know, that's as far as I go. Okay. Um, as of what labels in the community, I guess D-type, Dom, uh, I've, I guess daddy at times. I primal, sadist, uh, little, um, hedonist. Yeah, we'll go with that. Okay. And oh, and my pronouns are God, Lord. <laughs> Thank and, you. Uh, yeah, that's about it. <laughs> I was waiting for you. To come out and say that. I was waiting for it. Uh, yeah, I have other pronouns. Like, please, uh, my pronouns are God, God Lord. Yes. yes. <laughs> right. Come on with it, Mr. Sith. That's come Mr. on Sith with it, y'all. That's Mr. Sith, y'all. Who don't know, now you know. I've, I've, I, guess I haven't really come across too many uh, difficulties in the community. For the most part, I've had to correct people, you know, when they assume that she's my sub. And I'm like, no. No, we're both D types. Uh, I've come I to to navigate telling people that we share S types. So it's mm -hmm. not like you know she has her group of S types. I have you know she has her her servants over there. I have my servants over here. No, we share. Mm -hmm. You know they're ours. Like you know mm -hmm. they say how a king and queen would be. Mm -hmm. So if you're not if that's not for you, no biggie, no loss. We're not thirsty. We don't give a fuck. Basically, right. come on. It is. I mean, these are the parameters that we set. If they're not for you, move on. Exactly. You know, it's, it's not, it's, it, when it's, it doesn't matter to us like that. We're not searching. We aren't um, bending mm -hmm. our parameters. It's what we are. It's what we do. That's it. You know, that's how we found each other. We knew what we were looking for. Right. And we checked off with each other. And that's what we look for in other people. They check off or check out. I like that. I do too. I respect that. <laughs> <laughs> I did that. That's um. I think that's how more people should navigate their own, uh, not even their, their dynamics, but their desires too. It's like don't settle for it. If you know what you want, and you know what you want to build, or you know what you want to create, there's somebody it, out there somewhere that will. Match thing that is, thing. don't make assumptions. Also, right. like 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 Mrs. Sis said, we know other. DD types, I mean, other yeah. DD couples, and their the way they navigate is not always the same as we, and it's not always the same as each other. You know, mm -hmm. we have we know one couple who have their own subs. Mm -hmm. You know, they have their own separate subs individually. Okay, right, individually. We know couples who share. We know couples who do both, who share and have their own. It's everybody's different every couple's different it's right. design and dynamics right i mean that's for everything like it's different yeah for different but folks. see people come into it with assumptions mm -hmm. right yeah. right it needs to be x y and z way and it's so limiting that way like mm -hmm. <laughs> well, you know, how, how are you exploring your kink exactly. if you're putting limits around exactly. it right right True. and then you and then you miss out on the you know like there's other stuff there's the idea of I mentioned this recently that, you know, it's kind of important to have some elasticity mm -hmm. in your relationships mm -hmm. to make some space mm -hmm. for growth mm -hmm. and for change and for, you know, interest to evolve 
so that everyone gets a little more of what they want. You may not get it all, and you may not even get it all at the same time, but if you can get some of it some of the time, you know, that's definitely more than what some people are having, are experiencing currently trying, you know, in, you know, being opposite, saying that they're going to be more rigid. They don't want to have any elasticity. I'm not saying to bend for, you know, your principles, but there still has to be some space for some change. Right. This all or nothing idea that either one person or you currently, how you are, what your desires are, is all there will ever be. That's, it's false. Yeah. Like, it, I, is, it doesn't make sense. And it actually, like, it leads into another question that we had. Because, may I ask, how long have y'all been together? Almost 10 years. Almost yeah. 10 years. Okay. So where you are now, how you identify individually and as a couple, were you that way 10 years ago? No. I wasn't. Yeah. I wasn't identifying as hetero flexible back then. Mm-hmm. Um, and I thought that I might have been moving towards poly, but it turns out I'm just really more non-monogamous. Mm-hmm. Okay. Can, can I ask, like, how do you define non-monogamous for you versus why you say you're not poly? I... I'm, I'm, I guess I'm a bit of a stickler for words and, and, and dictionary meanings. <laughs> so when, I, so when okay. I read what the definition of polyamory is, I realized that I do not love readily nor easily. Mm-hmm. And I am not necessarily looking for love. So that's even probably even more important than whether or not I'm, you know, easily or readily, you know, pursuing it. Mm-hmm. But I do like outside sexual experiences so i think of that as being non-monogamous i'm open to outside sexual experiences but not necessarily falling in love or looking for love or trying to build some sort of um brand like a new addition to the family or anything like that that's not really in the cards in my head you know, maybe if something's going to shock me later on, I meet somebody that throws, you know, throws a monkey wrench, which they always say happens from time to time. Mm-hmm. Hasn't happened so far. I'm not really worried about it. I'm going with non-monogamy. <laughs> okay. Okay. And again, there's that room for elasticity, you know, like a little bit yeah. of movement. So what I about- go for, I know I'm, I, I bounce back and forth between poly and non-monogamy hmm. only because it, I, I don't love easy. So I won't say, I'm not quick to say poly, but I'm, I'm, um, I don't know. I'm, I'm just going, just learning life. You know, that's the best way to put it. I don't love easy. And even if I do love, it's not like it's a type of love for, uh, 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 romantic or I don't know. So I I don't say non-monogamy. Sometimes I say poly, but it's not always, poly doesn't always mean polyamory. So Hmm. it's like, um, I'm just living life and we're just having fun <laughs> and we're learning and no, you're we're just absolutely right. we're meeting people we meet people you know if your friend your friend if it's less is less if it's more it's more it's I, I i i can't say what it's the future is going to be you know so i just we just we just move and we just you know yeah, you're maturing. Live, learn, you move and with laugh. it as it comes for you. And I, I love that you actually add the Amory because a lot of people just say poly and they don't right. add the Amory. It's like, no, there that's a whole that's a whole word. <laughs> you're chopping yeah, exactly. it in half. Like so, yeah, so I, I, I say poly, but I don't say polyamory. It doesn't right. you know, it doesn't mean Exactly. You know, poly means more than one. And right now we right. have poly more than just each other. Right. We have a sub, you know. Right. Exactly. Who's who's been in our life for quite a while, and you know, as things move on, she's you know she's always going to be in our life, whether she stays our sub or not. She's always going to be in our life. Right. So, so that's that. Um, can I there ask? was another question that you asked, and I can't remember. You don't have to. We will do that. We'll do the thing okay. for you. Right. No, no. <laughs> so the question you had asked, I wanted to chime in, but I totally forgot what the question was. So, fuck it. <laughs> well, I mean, okay, so like. That, it, it doesn't even matter. I know we're going to circle back to it. Of course. But yeah. you already brought up another question that we had, which is you brought up your, your submissive, right? And mm-hmm. even though you kind of touched on it and you gave us a little taste of how you guys navigate your relationship with them or with her, I don't want to I don't want to assume pronouns. Yeah, well, her is okay, correct. With her. Okay. Um, so how do y'all navigate your relationship with your submissive? And then also, like, how did that come to be? 
I'm nosy, y'all. I'm like, yeah. I want to know all the secrets. <laughs> How it came to be is she started off as our bottom. Mm-hmm. Okay. And then moved on after a year of being our bottom, being under consideration. Mm-hmm. And then about a year after that, she, we made her our sub. Okay. You know, she had the petition and. We didn't have a collar ceremony because we never really we never collared her, but we did officially make her our sub. Mm-hmm. Um, that's that. I mean, that was, and she's been our sub for three years now. Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Just about. Okay. Yeah. So. Some time, man. Okay. And she's lovely. That, you know, yeah, she, she is. She's so cute. Because of because yeah. of Corona mm-hmm. and a lot of things that are going on in her life. She's always going to be in our family. She, like I said, she probably won't be our sub mm-hmm. per se because she just doesn't have the time. She doesn't have the the time and the the, the ability to do it anymore. Mm-hmm. So we're probably going to wind up moving. You know, we're just going to keep her in the family. She's going to be. She knows our kids. She comes over, hangs out. Right. But it's you know things things evolve. Right. Right. Truth. Truth. Yeah, and true. that's the that's the elasticity I'm speaking of. Mm-hmm. The ability to recognize that even if the dynamic has to change a little bit, it doesn't mean that you have to cut the situation off in its entirety or walk away from it because it doesn't fit somebody else's paradigm for what you but for what they believe your relationship should be or your dynamic should be right. from the outside looking in. Right. Like honestly, I feel like I've been, let me see, I've been engaging in kink for, I'll say 14 years at least, right? And I feel like some of the most significant relationships I've built with people are from the kink community. And we started off as DS and things evolved. And, you know, sometimes that of a relationship or that dynamic changes and they're no longer main, able to maintain that. And still, they're significant figures in your life and... I don't yeah. think, like, kink, I feel like sometimes there's this idea that kink is limited or DS is limited to just, like, this dynamic. And I feel like uh-huh. it, it goes so much more, it, so much further than that. It depends. It depends on the it dynamic. Can. Some people right. have the dynamic more like a, it's a job, you know, mm-hmm. like, you can't perform your occupation, you can't stay at this, you know, establishment anymore. Right. You know, that's how some people look at it. As a pro dom, there's some, there's some, you know, some relationships like that where, yeah, it is a job. Right. I clock in, I clock out, and that's that, and that's the dynamic right. that we have. But so again, it depends on the people, right? Depends on the people, and, and you know, what things have, if things have have evolved from the beginning, or if it stayed rigid. You know, what I mean, if it stays rigid, then most likely, if it, if the power exchange ends, then you know, the dynamic ends, and then the people involved in, right. Right. If it didn't, and then you got some people who kind of make a make a DS with a relationship outside the DS. Mm. So now, if the DS ends, not the relationship ends. Right. Mm-hmm. So therefore, you know, you know, you break up with somebody like that. Some people stay still friendly, and some people stay toxic. Right. Again, nothing is the same across the board. Yeah. Very true. There are a million different types of relationship I styles. Guess. Yeah. <laughs> In DS and otherwise. Yeah. yeah. And that could be promoted too, but it's it's I think it's easier and probably fits, fits the pictures better to just do it. <laughs> to just make it DS and make it male top. I mean male D and female S because mm-hmm. people seem to enjoy that. I don't know if they I, I don't know what it is that makes people sort of stick with the one ideal and not ever choose to explore other possibilities because for instance long ago um when we first came when i first came to the lifestyle i was lucky to have a conversation with sir guy Mm -hmm. and he all kind of opened my eyes to the idea that was in the very early stages when we first came when i first came to the lifestyle it made his statement made me a little more comfortable about the idea of D D. and he said that everybody's on a spectrum no one is any one thing and you could have two s types that decide they want to have a relationship together and choose to find b types to satisfy that piece of their lives separately 
either separately or together. Right. And that's what gave me the, you know, the comfort that it really didn't matter as much as it was being, as much as it was being portrayed to matter. Right. That you could have what you wanted just because you chose to have it. Mm -hmm. Right. I and, love that. And it's, and it's better to have something that's successful than to be straining to find something that fits that perfect power exchange ideal. Right. Or someone that's else's box. Which is really just someone else's ideal that you've now adopted for yourself, exactly. you know? Right. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. That's absolutely true. I mean, it's, you know, does it, di excuse me, <clears throat> designer dynamics, you know, if you build it, they will come. And there's nobody that can tell you that what you're doing. I mean, people going to talk, they always are going to. But if it works for you and it works for the people that are around you, then fuck everybody else, basically. Basically. <laughs> like you said, people going to talk, but we, you know, we don't listen anyway. It, yeah. Right. We weren't going to do that. We, we don't listen. We said we outsiders among outsiders. We could. Yes, y'all yeah. like to stick to the shadows. Y'all are true, y'all are true <laughs> no, I love it. I love it. But I do want to like tap onto something real quick because um, it has been something that's been floating around the scene for a while and the lifestyle for a while that you guys identify as um, primal. And I know that um, Mr. Sid that you are a board, uh, sitting on the council of a board a board member of Tess. Um, and I know that you have had your own workshops for Tess explaining primal and what that not explaining it. I would probably say like kind of introducing it to some people who have been very curious about it, but for you both, um, being this, you know, double delight of, of dark Sith sadist primal energy, what does primal mean for y'all and how does it navigate? How is it different than your dynamic with your sub or is your sub a part of that as well? I know that was a lot. I'm sorry. I just kind of like jumped around. I can right, feel like the gears let's, turning let's, when you do that long pause. That um, <laughs> this famous long pause. I, yeah, well, it's like this. Primal again. Primal is different for everybody. Absolutely. Feels like they're primal, or you know, adheres to primal. You got different people who will say they feel they're an animal, a mythological creature, mm -hmm. um, different things like that. I, I. I identify mm -hmm. as a paleolithic uh, caveman. Mm -hmm. So you got that. You got <laughs> very on uh, brand for you, <laughs> right? I immediately <laughs> thought of him, just like that is that image uh, through and through. <laughs> 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 um, our our sub doesn't. She's she doesn't really identify as primal, even mm -hmm. though we tell it, it's in her. She just doesn't identify as primal. Mm -hmm. But she's done. She's been prey. To mm -hmm. us, or bottom to us for primal scenes, stuff like that. Okay. You know, and, what do your primal scenes consist of? Like, can mm -hmm. you define that more explicitly? Um, a lot of, a lot of, uh, I don't just, I <laughs> primal. I guess it's, it's a lot of, say, take down, a lot of, mm -hmm. uh, hands on, snarling, scent play. Maybe, you know, more just bass. You know, base instincts, stuff like that. More physicality. More, I feel like primal, as myself, I identify as a primal hedonist. Um, mm -hmm. That it is less toys mm -hmm. and it is what? more close touching proximity of another person's body and tapping mm -hmm. into that first instinct. Mm -hmm. um, and again, like you said, and you have said many times, primal is different for every person, whether you identify as a primal predator or as a primal prey. Um, and nobody can tell, and I want to emphasize this, nobody can tell you what that definition is, whether you identify as a, a furry, as a kitten baby girl, or, you know, werewolf, a caveman, a werewolf, exactly. Right. You know, it's, it's how you tap into that, that, that space for yourself. Um, but again, it's, it hasn't been something that has been talked about, um, but has become very popular. Yeah, it's a hot, <laughs> it's a hot, it's a, it's a, it's a hot, hot yeah, yeah, you know, people are like, oh, yeah. bam. Oh, yeah. And you'll have, like I said, it's, the, 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 the thing about it is that there are certain characteristics or certain common characteristics, but they're not universal. Correct. So it's, it's hard to... To, it's not it's, 
it's hard to tell someone else they're not. Right. It's not too hard to define what other people who identify as primal, what their characteristics are. And as you talk to different people, you find somewhat a universal group of characteristics, mm-hmm. you know. Mm-hmm. But again, if you tell me you're primal and you like, you know, brandishing a sword and you like mm-hmm. doing X, Y, and Z, I'm like, all right, cool. That's that's primal for you. The right, people right. that you agree with that and they're happy with it, cool. Right. I'm not going to come over here and tell you what you're doing ain't what is right for you. Right, right. You know, it's the same way in in eating bark off of a tree. Like, right? (laughs) Some people, for some people, primal is more esoteric. True. More spiritual. I've come across people who identify as primal, and they're not into the the, the grappling or the biting. They're more esoteric Mm -hmm. primal. I'm Mm -hmm. like, okay, Mm -hmm. that's cool. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm I'm not going to tell you how to do you. I'm going to tell you how we do we, how other people like us or similar people do things, and I'll give you those characteristics. Mm -hmm. If you feel you, those characteristics apply to you, then I'll give you a couple of groups and other places to go in and talk to more and more people who identify as primal and see you can see if you fit and if it works for you. Right, right. That's all. You know, it's. I was reading a book about leather in the 80s Mm. in San Francisco. Forget the name of the book. Urban Aboriginals? Yes. Yeah, I know. I got you. And <laughs> the, way, the way the person described the leather community. Yes, exactly. In the 80s. Yeah. It sounds like primal in the new millennial. Yes, hmm. exactly. So I, it's, you know, different names, same feeling. But from my understanding of the leather community now, a lot of it is not what it was back in the 80s. Mm-hmm. You know, a lot of things have changed. It's a little more organized, a little less, less primal. Yeah, I'll yeah, put I mean, it that way. You know, from what I see, and from the people who started primal, yeah. who, who coined the phrase and started a group, they also are in a leather community, and they're in a leather community. But they feel they felt the need to start a different offshoot for kinksters who mm-hmm. identify as who have these characteristics, mm-hmm. right? Even though those same characteristics were part of the original leather community. Mm-hmm. Evidently, these people felt that those characteristics weren't there anymore, so they needed to start something different. Mm-hmm. That's how I look at it. That's what I found. You know, from my reading and talking to some of the people, that's what I gathered to be. Okay. Like I said, you build it, they will come. And, you know, that's the whole thing. It's like maybe my primal is different than your primal. Or, you know, my leather communication in one communi- in one community is different. But, you know, once you voice that about yourself, other people be like, hey, that kind of makes more sense to me. Let me go here. Let me right. build I this. Let me talk that. about th- this with you. Cool. And, like, I love the idea of esoteric pr- uh, primalism because, I mean, that's... I mean, that's where it all comes from and in its, in its root. So I absolutely dig that. Hmm. I absolutely dig that. That's very chill. Hmm. And what about you, Mrs. Sith? My primal? Um, I pretty much think of myself as... I consider vampires primal. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. So I think of myself as sort of slightly feral. Mm-hmm. You know, kind of a slightly feral vampire who likes pretty things and, 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 still wants, and still wants to roll around like a <laughs> exactly. cat like i don't know how to i've never been able to really narrow my primal down the way he has mm-hmm. um because i find that i just don't do well trying to get too heady about it like yeah. i have to more experience it and yeah. if i experience something ma- yeah. in the majority of the time then i'll kind of go with that but to be honest with you i haven't really experienced vampire versus the cat versus feral mm-hmm. they probably i'm probably experiencing that probably at, probably at equal in equal measure so right, right. yeah and i'm pretty much looking at it that way <laughs> and, I, and i love that i love the idea of you not boxing yourself into one yeah. archetype or the other and it is primal it can be very mercurial it can move from one space to another mm-hmm. and as as you feel it so it's totally valid <laughs> not to be like, like i, I kind of treat it like it's an extension of my senses mm-hmm. so my senses i have i don't have good eyesight but i have really good smell so i tend to smell people and things and and those things change my mood and how mm-hmm. i feel and 
you know, whether or not I feel more predatory or if I feel more like I want to lay back and just kind of sit in the cut and kind of watch what's going on mm-hmm. and feed off that energy. Maybe mm-hmm. I want to see your energy and then just feed off what you're experiencing mm-hmm. esoterically, you know, so mm-hmm. I could, I could kind of be in a lot of different spaces. So I'd rather not narrow myself down too much. I, like well, I narrow my, myself down now because when I first started, I would do different iterations of what my primal was. Mm-hmm. You know, I came in thinking I was more like a, say, a wear lion. Mm-hmm. And then I was like, mm. and then I went into more like, say, a, 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 a manticore. And then, and I started realizing the things that I identified with were, were feral, but they all had some form of humanity, mm-hmm. some form of man, you know, of man. And then that's when I was like, wait a minute. Yeah, I'm just a caveman. I'm just mm-hmm. a prehistoric, I'm a paleolithic. My prime was just man, base man. Hmm. I mean, that's what primal comes from. I mean, the word primal and no, the form exactly. of primus, it's but first. It's first. When you instinct, talk to people, you talk to a lot of other people, they identify, they, they feel that they their primal identifies with a certain creature. Oh, right. right. You know, I've heard that a lot. Talk to a lot of people. I mean, you. I've come across so many people who have different creatures that they identify with. Mm-hmm. Everything from rabbit to dragon to octopus to seal. I mean, it's just how, what, what, what feels to you. What yeah. it feels. Even bunny rabbits. Yes, yeah, right. rabbits. Mm-hmm. So, you know, it's it's what, what feels to you. What what mm-hmm. what animal or totem or spirit or whatever exactly. works for you. Mm-hmm. Exactly. I think with, with primal, it definitely straddles the line of spiritual and sacred and esoteric kink. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, it, it is a, a form of introspection. It is a form of where do you want to move? How do you want to interact with people? How do you want to be interacted with, with other yeah. people? So and it's a journey. Absolutely, it's a, a I mean, never ending, thing. changing journey. Mm-hmm. I feel like I'm very much like learning and soaking up a lot of information from you all. Like I, I know that I play very primally. I have a primal instinct in the way that I play and the way that I move. But I honestly, I hadn't really mm-hmm. identified with that until like it started coming into my ether like a couple of years ago. And honestly, I think it was because of Duchess and starting to like communicate or really starting to create more community with black kinksters. You know, mm-hmm. that's when I really started to have certain things kind of come into my understanding. And I'm very much in the beginning of all of that. Um, so I don't have anything that I identify with. But all of this is mm-hmm. very much like I identify with all of this, just not one specific mm-hmm. thing or one you specific don't have to. entity. Just exactly. enjoy it, learn it, grow with it. Mm-hmm. And if it if you identify with one thing later, good. If you don't, you don't have to. Right. Yeah. And that's what I really like about it. Like yeah, don't you're not tied down to, to anything. Yeah. I think that's the thing in the lifestyle we feel the most, which is pressure. Mm-hmm. Pressure to pressure to come up with a label. Pressure mm-hmm. to come up with oh. an with the definition for who you are, right. what you are, in order for people to have a better, in order for people to feel more comfortable right. engaging with you. But Thanks I think so it much. goes beyond just a matter of like people feeling comfortable. Like I kind of think it's a matter of what what le- level of respect do people give you? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's interesting. See, that's the problem. Mm-hmm. They should, they, and I realize they shouldn't let titles to pick the respect you give to somebody. They most definitely shouldn't, but we see it all of the time. Yeah, I know, I know. I and it's, it's mind I give blowing. everybody the same respect. I don't care if you got a collar on, you don't. Right. You got a whip in your hand, you don't. You the same level of respect. Mm-hmm. Like your title doesn't you. define you at all. And if I even do know you, I still give you the same respect. Yeah. Right. Yep. You know, simple and plain. It's, it's, there's no need to act. I'm not in the military anymore, so I'm not going to act like somebody's an <laughs> officer so somebody's not an officer. Fuck right. all that. I don't do That's done. I know this lifestyle was created with ex-military people, but I'm not adhering to that like that. I give everybody the same respect. I've called another male person, sir, not mm-hmm. because they're bigger than me or exactly. better than me. I just out of respect. Exactly. I, say, I say ma'am or lady or whatever, just out of respect. I don't know who you are. I just give you honorifics as out of respect. Right, exactly. right. Otherwise, it's too familiar and it's way disrespectful. <laughs> like, what are you doing? That's, 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 like, what are you doing? Absolutely. Like, what? Okay. Absolutely. So, okay, y'all been in it for a minute. Y'all know how you are in this scene. But, like, not everybody's like that. 
not everybody has that privilege, mm-hmm. right? So for those that are coming up in the scene, whether they're, they're primal seekers, primal players, or people just trying to figure out, I don't necessarily identify with what I'm seeing. Maybe I am more D and D. Like that's kind of something I'm am gearing toward. What kind of advice or I don't know insight would mm-hmm. you give them? Because I feel like. One thing I really respect about y'all is that you're not gatekeepers. Mm-hmm. And oftentimes, I like in the scene, we come across gatekeepers. Like, this is how it's supposed to be. Right. This is the only way. And y'all are not that. So I feel like it's a privilege to have y'all give any kind of insight to anybody that's coming up in the scene. Mm, that's a tough one. Because <laughs> insight requires you to spend some time sort of thinking about what you personally want to be or not want to be. And maybe giving yourself the permission to not make a choice. Patience. I like that. I, I think that that was one of the first things that gave me some freedom was the reality that a year in, I still had never chosen a title of any type. Hmm. And people asked me and I said, I'm not, even, I wouldn't even call myself a gangster. I would say that I'm just here. And they would, it would infuriate people. When <laughs> <it was here. laughs> they yep. absolutely were infuriated furious that I couldn't give them a label that would allow them to now determine how they want to engage exactly. with me. Mm-hmm. Right. So right. they had to just engage with me however that however that was going to turn out based on what they thought. Curse of the person. Yeah. That was fun. Yep, mm-hmm. that was fun. I think that was part of my sadism coming up. <laughs> <laughs> I think I was like low-key being sadistic about it. <laughs> but I, I was glad that I didn't choose because it gave me a lot of time to kind of just sit in the scene and watch and, and you know, kind of determine where I fit or if I fit at all. And Tell then when... Facebook group. Oh, yeah. The Facebook group? I, went, I was joining Facebook groups and I joined, I, was jo- I was joining kinky Facebook groups and I joined a group and they asked me a couple of questions. Mm-hmm. And one of the questions was like, you know, how long have you been in the scene? I said, a year. And they were like, you know, how do you identify? I said, I don't identify as anything as of yet. I have been watching and learning and such delight. She replied, we take this very seriously. <laughs> you are not with a title. We are not here for your games. I was like, my oh, games? What wow. The Wow. So yeah, so I was like, "Fuck these people!" Yeah. <laughs> I was so angry. <laughs> wow. Like, okay, and then so the rejection stung a bit, but I had already been in a bunch of different groups, okay. and and they, you know, it made me dig my heels in even more. Like I literally took like probably another six months to a year to freaking make a title at that point because I was like, I didn't really feel that it was necessary i felt that i should be able to enjoy kink from either for from either side of the slash or no slash at all right because yeah. i was trying to just navigate the sensations and enjoy the, the scenes you tried being a sub yeah i did that for two weeks it wasn't very good <laughs> I'm, I, I'm in the same boat that's how my journey started i tried it for I two weeks it did not i told her like she wasn't weeks. but she wanted to try i said all right well then do this do this do this Ooh, that does not yeah after two weeks you know, <laughs> said, it's not for me i said i told you it's not for you I was, but you know <laughs> that sounds like a level of irritation <laughs> Ooh, that was bad it was so bad it was so bad i was, I was like, like okay now you ready to Try being a detail. Let's do this. <laughs> but try. You want to try, huh? I wanted to see what it was like. Right. I, that's a beautiful thing. You yeah. Should. You should be able uh, to see what it's. But like. I knew her personality. I knew. I was like, this. It's not this ain't good. I think that some of the design, you know, that causes the idea of a specific gender belongs to a specific um, title mm-hmm. comes from the idea of men pursue women. Right. So. I, even though I know that in the lifestyle they say that the sub does the um, does the submit, you know, she's the one that's, you know, that person. Let's just say she for this particular um, example is doing the petitioning and requesting and such the like. But I feel like what I observed was regular vanilla behavior mm-hmm. under the guise of DNF, D, D type versus S type. Right. And that those S types were now pursued by those D types, those male D types, those female S types were pursued by those male D types in much the same fashion as men are pursue, men pursue women in regular vanilla life. And, mm-hmm. right. 
And I thought that that was sort of a weird sort of space because I didn't necessarily see the same happening to dames or, or rather um, female D types mm-hmm. the way it was happening to female um, S types. Mm-hmm. So I thought it was sort of interesting that that was that that was what was being pushed. And I'm like, well, that doesn't make a lot of sense. Like, what the hell? Where am I? <laughs> like, you know, I was very confused. So I don't know. It was that was just one of the observations I made was that I feel like people bring people don't admit that they bring a lot of what is happening in their vanilla life into their kink life. And those same rules affect you and make you do certain things. Mm -hmm. And then ultimately make the community force people into, or at least by group think, make you make newcomers feel like they can't choose outside the quote unquote norm. Yes. Even though they're coming into an alternative lifestyle. Right. Oh, it's, that al- it's not that alternative. <laughs> it's really not. It's really not. We say it is, but it's really not. We yeah. perpetuate the same levels of bullshit <laughs> across the board. Basically, we've, we've had so many conversations yeah. about this. I'm just like, amen. Amen. <laughs> yes. All that. True. It's just like we it, you're raised by it and and if if kink isn't your life 24 7 you're still going to be influenced by vanilla life yeah very much so yes it's if anything anywhere you go where has entertainment is influenced is going to put vanilla standards in your mind mm-hmm. all of the standards to non-kinky people all it's still all of it's just going to even subconscious it's going to be keep bombarding your head i feel like anything that's considered the norm across the board is going to be infiltrated in your mind in some way regardless of how you identify outside of that absolutely yeah. absolutely all the standard tropes apply so right you and don't all get of the escape. standard like bullshit and predatory and harmful and toxic things can be perpetuated in any kind of alternative i mean everything from 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 um from ageism mm-hmm. to- ableism the ableism, fat phobia, racism, you know, yes, all, of it, all of it. We don't get to we don't get to escape just because we chose to do these alternative things. Right, right. very true. You no, know, we, we we really still have to navigate those big, difficult spaces, those difficult obstacles, rather. Because I wouldn't call them spaces; they're really just obstacles. But right. um, we still have to navigate them because we still find them continuously practiced by various people, whether they realize it or not. Mm-hmm. So very true. So very true. So Mr. Sith in closing, like it's kind of amazing. First of all, thank you all for being on this call with us. I mean, sitting down with two black queer, sorry, black kinky and geeky individuals. Um, you're a council member, you know, you're sitting on the board of Tess. Um, yeah. How does that feel being a black man? Um, I mean, I, I, I mean, feels like a black man on a board. I mean, come on. I mean, like, for, those who don't know, for those who don't know what Tess is, it's like the Esponja Society, and it was started the in 1971. The Yugen Spiegel Society. Spiegel. I guess Spiegel. Thank it's you. A, I can never get the word right. Spiegel. It's an organization for kinksters in New York. Correct. Mm-hmm. Based out of New York. Mm-hmm. Correct. And for me, I mean, I, if, if you're asking how does it feel to be a POC in a... Yes. Uh, nine in a group of nine POCs, or yes. one of the few POCs in a large group of nine POCs. Has to feel for me doesn't bother me. For I mean, me, I'm not saying it I should can't bother speak, you, but you speak are a other people. representation. It doesn't bother me. I know how to navigate that. I grew up. One thing about um, playing Dungeons and Dragons from 1978 is I grew up. I was in a lot of groups that there was very few POCs to begin with. Mm-hmm. A lot of my friends from junior high and high school are non-POC. Mm-hmm. Right. A lot of friends that I still hang out with, I still talk to, to this day, are non-POC. So I grew up in Queens with a mixed group of people. Mm-hmm. So for me, it doesn't bother me. I know how to how to, to navigate it. I've, I've worked in corporate America for 30 years. I know how to navigate it. Mm-hmm. Right. Not, so not when not- you ask me... How does it feel? It doesn't feel too much different than my daily. Well, so, sorry, go ahead. So not necessarily how you navigate it. Because, like, I feel like as black folks, we constantly navigate blackness in non-black or POC spaces all the time. It's something we do. It's like, you know, it's in our blood at this point. We're constantly navigating those spaces. But, like, okay, you, Mr. Sith, 
big bad caveman sitting on the board like not how do you navigate it but like how do you get more resources or i don't know more faces that look like yours on the board are involved in things that well, you on the board you have to be a member of test for over for a year or more okay that's one okay and prefer and also not only a member they the board has to see well actually to be a member you have to get voted by the membership to be on the board all right you have to be voted by the membership to be on the board so you run it's like you know it's a small little things of politics you, you put in that you want to run you run if you get voted in by the overall membership or overall votes you get put in mm. um Beside that, if, if how do you get more people to be part of TESS or more POCs to be part of TESS? I guess you got to see more, which is one of the reasons I joined, or one of the reasons I became a board member. Okay. Because I was waiting for more POCs or, you know, POCs to be on the board. And there were, you, you had um, uh, uh, the very first. Ramon, you had Ramon that was there before I got there. Um, mm -hmm. So Ramon, you had Gigi, those are, those are uh, POCs. Okay, but I guess I was waiting and waiting, and there was people. There were POCs, before, you know, before, way before me. Sir Guy had been a member of the board for a number of years. Okay, so it wasn't like there was never POCs on the board. You know, right. the very first president of TESS, the only the only president of TESS was a black guy. Right, right, yep. It was a black man, I think, in the seventies or early eighties, something like that. Um, so what made me run is that I just I wanted to see. I started realizing that a lot of people didn't know about TESS. And TESS, for the community or in a whole, for the kink community, TESS is magnificent. Mm -hmm. they, they do things to organize the safety of the community, and they have workshops, and they have classes, and things of that nature. And I kept coming across people, POCs, who never even heard of TESS, never heard of the classes. So a lot of them would go out of town. You know, they'd wait you know, once a year, go out of town right. to an event to go to classes. And I'm like, yo, this class is right here. You could go like once every two weeks if you want. And they didn't know. And then I'm like, well, you know, I'm, I'm trying to find out why they don't know. And I'm looking at, I'm side-eyeing some of the people that they know who've been around for a while. And I'm like, why didn't you tell them about it? Mm -hmm. Oh, well, you know, it's, it's, you know, there's not many of us there. And it feels, you know, it feels... Strange going to a not you know to a predominantly non POC group or class or whatever, <clears throat> and so I was like, you know what? Let me just let me try and be that change that I keep waiting to see. Mm -hmm. So I did it, and I tell people all the time: I go, a class is a class. You learn if you go to a class to learn something, you're going to learn it. True. Doesn't matter who's throwing it, and, I, and when I say it doesn't matter, I know. You might there might be some micro aggressions just because people are people. Right. Crappy you know, I, people I understand that. I'm not saying that's not going to happen. I'm not saying you know we work on trying to make it not happen. Mm -hmm. And microaggressions not just against uh, POCs, but microaggressions against people of various genders, right. things like that. Right. And we're trying to work with people who are great uh, teachers and great instructors but have been around for so long that they haven't learned the different pronouns that are out there now. Mm -hmm. So we're trying to work with them on that. And we also tell the people who are coming, we explain a little bit, like, you know, it, that change of pronouns is not going to happen overnight. Some of these people have been using the same two pronouns for 50 years. Mm -hmm, right. It's not going to happen. We try and correct them. We try and work with them, but it's not going to happen like that. Mm -hmm. So bear with us as we bear with them, as we work with you. You know, uh, beside that, I also let Tess know, or the board know, that I'm not the spokesman for the black community. Amen to that. Yes. Right. Okay. You know, I am not, don't come to me with, you know, Black Lives Matter questions. <laughs> I'm right. Not right. You want to know there are groups out there. Put yourself in those groups and ask the questions and get a general consensus. Right. Right. Connect with others. I'm not going to do your homework for you. Right. No. Nope. Yeah. But uh, you know, hey, what else? What else was the questions? <laughs> <laughs> you got him on a soapbox. 
soapbox. I know. Uh, here for it. <laughs> I know, I know. No, like, okay, so hold up. So, first of all, we know that y'all have time restraints and we don't want to run over. Yeah, them. yeah, we, look, we just let them know we're running about a little late, so we, yeah, we got to bounce a minute. That's all right. Okay, okay, so we didn't want to run over those, but like, Y'all answered so many questions for us. I don't want to like keep on taking up your time. I Although I could talk to y'all right, all night basically. and I could like pick your mind and just like <laughs> this fan girl and just like oh my god, bask in y'all ambiance all day. But <laughs> time restraints, you know. Um, I don't know. I don't. I feel like this was a good way to wrap it up because fantastic. y'all, y'all just do so much. And I feel like y'all gave a lot. Um, oh, oh, wait, wait. How can people find y'all? Like, support y'all. Send money away. Come to your classes. <laughs> like, um, uh, support us. I don't know. We got one it. thing I like to one thing I like to bring to um to, to remind him of is blase. And we haven't Ooh, yeah. actually we haven't we haven't uh, done the yeah. um yeah. the next blase yet. But we but we need to um. Uh, right. <laughs> yeah, Blase something is a is a pet project that I kickstart. I started and I think kickstart. I started in February. Okay. I started prior to February. The, the first group meeting was in February, and it's supposed to be more until Corona hit. Mm-hmm. Blase stands for Blacks Living Alternatively, Supporting Each Other. It's a a alternative support group for POCs. Okay. And it's a turn. I'm sorry. It's a, a PLC alternative lifestyle support group. So it's for people who are kinky. It's for people who are who do alternative things. Say swinging. Say poly. It's it, it encompasses all things, genders, and it's just for us to talk with each other to 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 maybe speak on experiences and maybe what they what you did to maneuvering those experiences. To to for people who may not have a chance or the ability to meet other people who are alternative, mm-hmm. you know, a face that you see now in this group might be a face you see at a non POC group or an event, and you may not be friendly, but you know you've seen them, so you know you know you feel some kind of safety, secret support. Right. You know, if something goes wrong, you got a face or a set of eyes that might back you. Mm-hmm. You know, you're not a stranger to each mm-hmm. other. You know, because we in this community and a lot of communities generally try and be anonymous and and, and work secretly. Mm-hmm. And because of that, you don't give the chance to to network with each other. Right. So Blase is for that. It was again, it was for it was that. And then I had a lot of people who were organizers of various events and various groups come out. And I gave them a chance to speak and, and talk about their event, talk about their organization, the munches, and gave other people, POCs, uh, the ability to talk to them. Mm. At that, gave them a space to talk because promoters and organizers generally don't have a lot of time to talk to you at their event. Right. They're doing a thousand so different I, things. I, so I created Blase, not only as a support group, but a group for POCs to network or to talk to promoters and get a better feel and get a better understanding or maybe even say things they didn't have a chance to say at the event, you know, if there was a problem or, you know, whatever, they may not have a chance to say it. Right. Well, you have a space to say it. Well, where can people, where can people find Blase and where can people find and like sign Blase, up Blase? Yeah, okay. <laughs> In my oldness, <laughs> I, right now, and I get this from a lot of people bar, uh, coming at me, I'm keeping Blase to live meetups. And because of Corona, that means it's going to be quite a while. Right. I haven't done any video Zoom that people want to do. I I don't got the bandwidth for it. Okay. Honestly, put it bluntly, when I come home, I throw all my hats off at the door. Mm-hmm. E- even being a community activist and all of that. So this Zoom is a lot because I try to just keep everything out of the home. When it comes to that, I just want to don't want no. I don't want everything I hold outside coming in. That's right. the best way to put. It. So right. Blase is my project, our project. It works outside, and it'll come back once everything is done. You look for any events on Fet right now. We got a group on Fet. 
blase. And that's, you know, that's where it'll be posted when everything gets back to normal. Okay. Whatever normal is, but yeah. Yeah, the new normal. Right, right. Okay. Well, we really do. And blase, again, blase is there's no hands in it but POC. So it's, if anybody was thinking that, oh, Tess is secretly backing it, it's, well, no, this is outside of Tess. That's right. why when I had it, I didn't even mention any part of Tess or I'm part of Tess, none of that. I, it's for us, by us. Mm. Yeah, which we need. So we're back to the FUBU slogan. I love it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, uh, <clears throat> Mr. and Mrs. Sith, we appreciate y'all so much. Like, this was wonderful. And really, we really we love you for actually accepting us into your home because I know all your hats are off, but we appreciate you for <laughs> this one on for us. Absolutely. Yeah, this was really good. Thank you. Uh, thank, thank you so you, much for is, you know for considering so us to even talk of to us. <laughs> Have y'all met you? Have you I seen mean, you? How could we is, not? This is what I tell them. <laughs> hey, listen. Doesn't matter. You never take it for granted. <laughs> <laughs> True though. You know, my, you know my pronouns are a uh, God and Lord. I am humble. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, we know. We know. I'm How's that? We know. We know. I'm thank looking you. gagging every time you say it. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. <laughs> All right, y'all. I hope you have a well, we hope you have a good night. Thank you so much. <laughs> Appreciate it. Thank you. Enjoy, guys. Yes. Good night. Good night, y'all. Bye. Bye. And then oh, hold on. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yes. I fucking love yeah. them. Oh my god, I love that. What was oh, that? That was gorgeous. Thanks. Come out later. Y'all don't know what that was. <laughs> that was just this badass, hot ass picture of Duchess just looking all fine and stellar on the desktop. No big deal. Well, you know. But, but yeah, they are amazing. I I love them so I much. I love them very, very dear to my heart. And I mean, that was just the tip of the iceberg when it comes to them and what they do and who they are. And I look mean, again, their lifestyle and kink elders. And they have so many years of experience and knowledge between the both of them that, Mm -hmm. I mean, we're going to have to figure out a way to bring them back and talk to them some more. Um, But damn, yeah. I was just like, we could just keep talking. We could just keep going. I'm like, it's fine. It's like, just leave that hat on for another, like, 42 minutes. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. No, but, like, I really want to get together and... I don't know when that'll be, but I would yeah. really like to like get together, sit down with them again, have mm-hmm. a drink and just like go in even further. Cause mm-hmm. I feel like, I don't know. I know a lot of kink elders. Mm-hmm. You, we both do, mm-hmm. but it's such a pleasure to have them and know yeah. them and their dynamic, which is Absolutely. just beyond goals. It's really just, I don't know, empowering to see yeah. like, you know, Representation fucking matters, man. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I respect them for that.